Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning, dear students. Welcome to the class. This is lecture number nine on Anglo Maratha relations. Let us start with the background. Warren Hastings was able to conclude in the Treaty of Subsidiary Alliance with the Auth in North India. Likewise, the Madras government in South also strengthened their position through their influence in Carnatic and Northern Sarkats. In one of the lectures, we have studied how the British emerged victorious in Carnatic and they occupied Northern Sarkats. But the president and the council of the Bombay government could not make such kinds of achievements. They were eagerly waiting for such kind of opportunities. But they were prohibited from making such kinds of advancement because of the presence of powerful Marathas in Western India. The Bombay government was eagerly abiding to occupy the two important ports of Sal City and Basain on the western coast of India. Had it been occupied, they could engage in immense trading activities through these ports. But these two ports, Sal City and Basain, were under the control of the mighty Marathas. It was also the British government in Bombay was also hoping to get political ascendancy in Pune. But one opportunity was provided to the British government in Bombay with the internal dissensions which broke out among the Marathas after the death of fourth Peshwa. Madhava Rao in 1772. He was one of the powerful Peshwas or the Prime Ministers of the Marathas. He recovered the Marathas from the Panipat debacle of third Panipat debacle of 1761. In this battle, Agamad Shah Abdali defeated the Marathas. From this debacle, it was Madhav Rao who played a key role in recovering the lost prestige and the power of the Marathas. He died in 1772. After the death of Madhav Rao, Narayana Rao became the next Peshwa. But Narayana Rao did not to rule long. He was killed in the very next year, 1773. After the de death of fifth Peshwa, Narayana Rao, two persons climbed to the post of Peshwa ship in Pune. One, Madhava Rao Narayan. He was the son of late Narayana Rao, who was the another claimant to the post of Pesha ship. It was Regunada Rao. He was the uncle of Narayana Rao. After the death of Madhava Rao, there were two claimants to the post of Pesha ship. Regunada Rao, who was incapable to fight against the powerful Council of Regency 
headed by Nana Fatnavis, the chief minister of Pune. So Raghunath Rao sought the help of the British. Uh, this provided an opportunity to the British to intervene the affairs of the Marathas. Raghunath Rao and the British government in Bombay ended a treaty. This was the Treaty of Suraj. It was signed between the Marathas and the British government in Bombay in 1775. By signing this treaty, the British saw in Raghunath Rao a blind tool to establish British supremacy in Pune. Soon, the British forces occupied the two important ports of the western coast of India, Sal City and Basain, and continued their force, continued their wars against the Maratha forces at Pune. But the news of the war with the Marathas at Pune reached the supreme government at Calcutta only after the actual war was started. The Supreme Government questioned the wisdom of the Bombay Government and why for an incapable person the British Government in Bombay engaged in war with the Marathas. The Supreme Government at Calcutta opposed the Supreme Government was now headed by Warren Hastings. He opposed the Governor General Warren Hastings opposed the military operations of the British government in Bombay against the Marathas. The Supreme Government in Calcutta sent Colonel Upton at Pune. Once Colonel Upton reached Pune, he entered into another treaty with the Marathas at Pune. It was the Treaty of Purandar. It was ended between the Marathas and Apton in 1776. Under this Treaty of Purandar, the British got Salsetti and Basain. And they also accepted a war indemnity paid by the Marathas. They gave up the case of the Raghunath Rao to the Peshwaship of Pune and the English recognized the Peshwaship of Madhava Rao Narayan. During this time, in, nine, in 1775, American War of Independence broke out, as you know. But in 1778, the France joined with the American colonies against the British. This change in the political landscape of Europe also reflected in India as well. It brought the changes in the political situation in the country. Let us look at what political changes did it create. It was coincided with the arrival of the French adventurer Chevalier de Saint Louis. He reached at Pune. The arrival of this French adventurer Saint Louis alarmed Governor General Warren Hastings since Britain and France was now on opposite sides. France supported the American colonies against the British. It alarmed Warren Hastings. Immediately, he sent a large force to Bombay under Godard to reinforce the army in Bombay. Once the powerful army was reached at Bombay, the British government in Bombay sanctioned military operations against the Marathas by treating the Treaty of Purandar 
as a mere scrap of paper. Neglecting the Treaty of Purandar, military operations were started by the British government in Bombay against the Marathas. No doubt, the Marathas were able to defeat the English, even though they were superior weaponry. The Marathas were able through the guerrilla warfare and by using the modern techniques of war, the Marathas were able to defeat the English forces. After defeating the English, a treaty was concluded between the Marathas and the English. This was the Treaty of Wadgaon. This treaty was ended into between the Marathas and the English in 1779. What were the terms of the treaty? Under this treaty, the company was required to give up all the gains they got through the Treaty of Purandar. They lost Salsetti and Basain to the Marathas. But in order to save the lost prestige of the British, in 1781, Captain Pobwam landed in Bombay and he was able to defeat one of the Maratha chiefs. There were five Maratha chiefs, out of which Pom Pom was able to defeat one of the Maratha chiefs, that is Sindhya. After defeating Sindhya, Pobwam captured Gaulier. But the war did not last long. They again ended a treaty, Treaty of Salbai. It was one of the important treaties ended in between the British and the Marathas. Under this treaty, signed between the British and the Marathas, the first anglo maratha war came to an end in May 1782. Under the treaty, status quo was maintained, mutual restitution of territories was observed. The company gave of Basain and other territories captured since the Treaty of Purandar. The company lost to Basain. But the British retained Salsetti and the Elephant Islands. The English gave up the case of Raghunath Rao once for all, for whom initially the British engaged wars with the Marathas. But now the English gave up the claim of Dehanada Rao to the post of Peshwa ship once for all. And the English recognized Madhava Rao Narayan as the Peshwa of the Marathas. Coming to the importance of the Treaty of Salbai. Salbai Treaty under which status quo only was established. This first anglo maratha war was indecisive. None of the poets, whether it was Marathas or the English, emerged victorious. But due to this war, the British government in Bombay landed in financial difficulty. But it gave 20 years, another round of struggle between the Marathas and the English forces commenced only after the 20 years lapse. It provided a fees in Maratha territory for long period of 20 years. But this period of 20 years was not effectively used by these Maratha chiefs. Instead of strengthening themselves against the growing power of the Britishers, these Maratha chiefs fought with each other. This period from 1782 to 1802 
that is in 1782 the first anglo maratha war came to an end and the second anglo maratha war broke out only in 1802 so it provided 20 years peace to the marathas it was it to be considered as one of the darkest periods of the history of the marathas as you have been told earlier there were five maratha chiefs these marathas got divided into five chiefs marathas was a confederacy it was a confederacy of these five chiefs one gekwad at baroda bonsil at nagpur golkar at indore sindhi at gwalior and peshwa at pune pune these were the five confederacies of the marathas during this long period of 20 years they engaged in conflict with each other rather than concentrating their strength for building against the british once lord wellesley arrived in india as the governor general the situation changed he was an imperialist par excellence was an imperialist once he arrived in india he considered the marathas as a challenge to the british in western india so he tried to impose subsidiary alliance on the marathas subsidiary alliance you have been told that under this the protection of an indian state would be taken over by the british they had it to be paid an annual payment instead of the protection made by these companies forces but the autonomy had to be surrendered before the british but nana fatnavis was well aware of the dangers posed by the subsidiary alliance so he was not ready to accept this subsidiary alliance he stubbornly opposed the subsidiary alliance which had earlier been introduced in out but the death of chief minister of pune nana fatnavis it gave another opportunity to the british to make an intervention in the affairs of the marathas in 1800 the armies of jasund rao kolkar he was one of the maratha chiefs defeated the combined armies of the sindhia and the peshwa and captured the city the period spanning between 1782 and 1802 was one of the internal struggles between the chief maratha chiefs it was one of these struggles in 1800 yasundrao kolkar he was one of the powerful maratha chief at kolkar he defeated both the sindhia and the peshwa at pune and also taken over the city of pune pune was the capital of the peshwas in this background peshwa bajirao second he was not like the previous peshwas he was an he was one of the incapable peshwas he sought the help of the english against jasundrao kolkar it provided an opportunity to lord wellesley who had been awaiting for an opportunity to intervene in the maratha affairs this much sought after opportunity was provided 
by Peshwa Bajrao second. The Peshwa Bajrao second, on whom Wellesley imposed a subsidiary alliance and signed the Treaty of Basain. It was one of the important treaties signed between Wellesley and Peshwa Bajrao II in 1802. What were the terms of the Treaty of Basain? Peshwa agreed to permanently station British army in his territories. That is, by making an annual payment, the British could be able to maintain their own forces at the cost of the Indian rulers. They did not make uh, any payment for the maintenance of these troops. The payment or the expenses arising out of the maintenance of these troops were met by these Indian rulers. And the British was also able to make better use of these forces for their own needs, for their own military operations against the Indian rulers. So it provided double profit to the British. Under the Treaty of Basain, Peshwa was allowed to maintain British army in his territories. In addition to that, in order to meet the expenses of these troops, he was agreed to give territories yielding 26 lakhs of rupees per annum. These territories were to be surrendered in Gujarat, south of the Tapti and between Tapti and Narmada. The fertile areas were required to be surrendered by the Peshwa to the British. Also surrendered the city of Surat. It was one of the prominent trade centers. In addition to that, under the Treaty of Basain, the Peshwa was required to give up. He was forced to end all claims in Nizam's territory. The Marathas lost the Nizam's territory. Earlier they used to collect Chauth and Sardesh Mugi from Nizam's territories. Now it lost to the Marathas. Again, under the Treaty of Basain, the Peshwa agreed not to resort to arms against the Gekwar. It was also agreed that company's arbitration company, the British would work as arbitrator in all disputes between him and the Nizam of Hyderabad and between Peshwa and Gekwar. He was also forced to accept that no Europeans were to be employed in Pune with whom the British had such a war. This clause was mainly used to end the influence of the French in Pune. He also agreed not to enter into treaty with any other foreign power without consulting the company. These were the terms of the Treaty of Basain. Now, have a look at the importance of the Treaty of Basain. No doubt, it made the British paramount power at Pune. The head of the Maratha Confederacy, Peshwa accepted the dependency of the British. So, once Peshwa became a dependent of the British, the other Maratha chiefs naturally became subordinated to the British. 
it was a natural corollary since Peshwa was the head of these all chiefs, confederation of the Maratha chiefs. Since Peshwa was the head of this confederation of Maratha chiefs and once he became a dependent of the British, all other Maratha chiefs naturally became the subordinate to the British. The Marathas had never accepted such a kind of subordination without a fight. Now, due to the internal strife among the Marathas, they accepted the superiority of the British. Under the Treaty of Basin, Peshwa surrendered the foreign policy to the British. Peshwa was also had made the British responsible for every war in which Peshwa's government involved. And company was made an arbiter in disputes between Peshwa and other Maratha chiefs. As well as the company was made the arbiter in all disputes between Peshwa and other Indian rulers. So, the independent power of the Peshwa got surrendered to the British. From the Treaty of Basin, it was clear that he surrendered all his claims on the territories of Nizam of Hyderabad. By doing so, Hyderabad passed into the hands of the Company's protection. One of the important effects of the subsidiary alliance introduced in Pune was the effect that now the British was able to station their armies in, cap in the capitals of the four Indian powers, Mysore, as in one of the Previous lectures, we have seen that after the fourth Anglo Mysore War, the British introduced a subsidiary alliance by installing what I are Hindu family ruler Krishna Raj III as a titular head. In Hyderabad, subsidiary alliance had already been accepted by Hyderabad. Lucknow, the capital of the Auth, Warren Hastings was able to yes, impose subsidiary alliance on Auth. And now in Pune, subsidiary alliance was imposed. From these four capitals, the British forces could move any part of the country and could suppress any uprising. Now, the ground was set for the Second Anglo-Maratha War, which was the main reason behind the outbreak of the Second Anglo-Maratha War. It was none other than to the Treaty of Basin. We have just studied the provisions of the Treaty of Basin. It was a national humiliation for the Marathas. All these provisions totally reduced Peshwa a mere rubber stamp in the hands of the British. All powers went into the hands of the British. Once the Peshwa was submitted, naturally all other Maratha chiefs were also made subordinated to the British. It was a national shame and humiliation for the Marathas. In this background, the Second Anglo-Maratha War was started. The period of the Second Anglo-Maratha War was from 1803 to 1806. The Sindhya and Bonsle 
challenge the British power together. While Sindhya and Bonsile were fighting against the British, Golkar did not join with them. Gol Raja of Golkar kept away without joining with the Sindhya and Bonsile against the British forces. The British forces easily defeated both Sindhya and Bonsile within no time. After the failure of these Sindhya and Bonsile, the British concluded with them separate treaties. The Treaty of Diogaon, which was signed between Raja of Bonsile on 17 December 1803. Under this treaty, Bonsile was required to give up Katak and the entire territory of the river Varda. All these territories and Katak passed into the hands of the British. Sindhya concluded another treaty with the British. This treaty came in known as Surji Arjun Gaon. This treaty Surji Arjun Gaon was signed between Sindhya and the British on 30 December 1803. For these two defeated Maratha chiefs concluded separate treaties with the British. What were the terms of the treaty of Surji Arjun Gaon? Under the treaty of Surji Arjun Gaon, he was surrounded the entire territory between Jamuna and the river Ganges. The territory north of Jaipur and Jodhpur. He was also required to surrender Ahmadnagar Fort and harbour of Baruch on the western coast. In addition to the surrender of these territories, these two defeated rulers, Bonsile and Sindhya, were also accepted the British residence in their court. So the British influence in the court of Sindhya and the Bonsile commenced. In 1803, Golkar did not wage war with the British, while Bonsile and Sindhya were fighting against the British, he kept away from the war. But in 1803, he single-handedly fought, the Raja of Golkar single-handedly fought against the British. He met with the same fate of Sindhya and Bonsile. He was also defeated by the British. Golkar, another treaty was concluded, the Treaty of Dajpur Kutch. This was the treaty entered into between the Raja of Golkar and the British. It was ended on 25 December 1805. On the British side, the signatory of this treaty was Sir George Barla, who on behalf of the British entered into the treaty with the Golkar on behalf of the British. What were the treaty of, what were the terms of the treaty of Rajpur Kutch? Under this treaty, Walker lost territories north of river Chambal and Bundelkand. No doubt, the second Anglo-Maratha was completely shattered. The Maratha chiefs, be it Bonsile or Golkar or Sindhya, all of them were defeated by the British and with whom separate treaties were concluded by the British. 
under these terms of the treaty they were required to surrender important territories important revenue bearing territories were to be surrendered by these defeated maratha chiefs to the british now coming to third anglo maratha war third anglo maratha war the period of which was from 1817 to 1818 what was the immediate background which provided for the another round of struggle between the marathas and the british it was the arrival of lord casting as the governor general in 1813 he was sent as the governor general of india once he arrived in india he decided to proclaim the british as a paramount power in india we have to remember that earlier they defeated the french and the dutch in different battles and most of the powerful indian rulers were also defeated by the british in the above circumstances casting wanted to make wanted to proclaim british as the paramount power in india following which he decided to impose humiliating treaties on the raja of nagpur the peshwa at pune and sindhya because of this the peshwa bajirao second bajirao second made his last efforts by combining together all the maratha chiefs against the british but even though these maratha chiefs joined together they could not win over the british the british again became the winners defeating the marathas following which the maratha confederacy was dissolved after the failure of the maratha chiefs in the third round of struggle between the marathas and the british maratha confederacy was dissolved by the british peshwa ship was abolished once for all hence bajirao second became the last peshwa his adopted son was nana sahib but he was not accepted by the british as the rightful representative of the bajirao second and that is why nana sahib joined against the british in the revolt of 1857 by denying pension to nana sahib the adopted son of peshwa bajirao second the british created one of the bitterest enemies of the british in india it was nana sahib like rani of chansi the territories of the peshwa were taken over the territories of the peshwa were taken over by the british peshwa now became a british retainer dominion what happened to other maratha chiefs dominions of bonsile north of narmada were annexed by the british 
However, he was allowed to continue as a subsidiary prince of the British. Gualkar was also required to cede territory to the British and he also became a subordinate chief of the British. Pradap Singh, he was a lineal descendant of Shivaji. He was made the ruler of a small principality Satara as the continuation of the Maratha power. Satara was carved out from the dominions of the Peshwa. Now we are going to see the major reasons behind the failure of the Marathas in this third round of struggle. With this the Marathas were completely defeated and the British became a paramount and unquestionable power in Western India. With the third Anglo Maratha war. Reasons for the failure of the Marathas are important. First of all, lack of unity among the Maratha chiefs. As you have been told earlier, after the first Anglo Maratha war, they got 20 years between the first and the second Anglo Maratha war. During this period, they did not engage in strengthening their military power against the British, but they engaged in conflict with each other. Internal strife was rampant among the Marathas. Had they been strengthened their power against the possible British attack, they would not have been in a position to defeat at the hands of the British. This 20 years was effectively used by the British. During this period, the British was able to defeat Mysore ruler Tipu Sultan. He was completely rooted out in 1799 through the fourth round of struggle between the English and the Mysorean forces led by Tipu. Now, second reason, the Marathas whose territory was mainly barren and the agricultural production was low. So, they mainly depended on Chaut and Sardesh Muhi. Chaut was the one-fourth of the total production and Sardesh Mughi was 10 percent of the total production over and above Chaut, where from the Marathas collected these taxes of Chaut and Sardesh Mughi from the neighboring territories, from the neighboring territories of Nisam of Hyderabad, they heavily depended on Chaut and Sardesh Mughi. Since they did not have the sufficient resources, they mainly depended on income from other territories in the form of taxes in the name of Chaut and Sardesh Mughi. Now, the Maratha Confederation, as you have been told earlier, consisted of five chiefs, one Peshwa at Pune, Gaikwad at Baroda, Golkar at Indore, Sindhi at Golier, and Bonsile in Nagpur. So, during the period of Shivaji and later, these rulers were able to maintain unity among these different chiefs. 
But after the death of Nana Fatnavis, the Marathas lost a powerful leader in 1800 with the death of Nana Fatnavis. He was able to maintain more or less togetherness among these powers. But after the death of Nana Patnavis, no powerful leader came into origin among the Marathas. These chiefs, they engaged in conflict with each other. Instead of unitedly fighting against the common enemy, who was the common enemy? It was the British. They could not to form a united front against the common enemy. The common enemy was the British. The interesting fact was that, as we have seen, during the course of the second round of struggle between the Marathas and the English forces, Bonsile and Sindhya were fighting against the British. Golkar kept alive. Had they been fought together, the British wanted to have been defeated. But the lack of unity among the Maratha chiefs was one of the main reasons behind their defeat at the hands of the British. Bonsile and Sindhya used to fight against the British in 1803 during the second anglo maratha war in 1803 while when did golkar start his fight against the british it was later in 1804 golkar started fighting against the british had they fought together against the british the British would have been defeated or the outcome what it to have been different, but this did not happen. Golkar alone met the English and he was defeated and forced to enter and a separate treaty with the British. From this, the lack of unity was one of the main reasons behind the failure of the Marathas. As you have been told earlier, after the death of Nana Fatnavis in 1800, no able leader came into origin among the Marathas. Leaders like Nana Fatnavis and Mahadeji were the powerful personalities. They could keep it together, the Marathas, and no outside elements entered into Maratha country. What about Vajrahu II, the Peshwa? He was inefficient and selfish. That is why he entered into the Treaty of Basain with the British. In order to save his own kingdom, he entered into a humiliating treaty with the British, the Treaty of Basain. He placed his own interest above the interests of the Marathas. No doubt, the Treaty of Basain was a humiliating treaty. Vajrahu II was mainly responsible for entering this Treaty of 
was sign under which the marathas lost their independence subsidiary alliance was imposed on the territory of the marathas they also lost the freedom to decide the foreign policy in all these matters the british used to take intervention what was the method of warfare of the marathas it was during the period of shivaji during this period shivaji mostly used guerrilla warfare against mighty aurangasip even aurangasip was not able to defeat shivaji because he adopted the guerrilla warfare shivaji successes also engaged in guerrilla warfare but later the method of warfare of the marathas changed instead of the guerrilla warfare they began to use the modern method of warfare artillery and gunnery artillery and gunnery began to be extensively used by the marathas in the method of warfare especially against the british by combining together the guerrilla warfare their old techniques of warfare and the new methods of warfare they were incapable to properly fight against the british forces they wanted to have been continued their traditional method of warfare it a time tested mode of warfare then the marathas failed to develop their economy no doubt the territory of the marathas was barren land the land of the marathas was mainly barren they mainly dependent as you have been told earlier they mainly dependent upon the resources available from the neighboring territories the marathas even though their lands were barren did not take any effective measures for increasing the production and thereby improving the economy they wanted to have been developed irrigation and the canal the maratha rulers did not find time to improve the agriculture by adopting irrigation or the canal and over and above the military superiority of the british which decided the fate of the maratha rulers even with the great fighting capacity and great value the indians with traditional weaponry could not win over the britishers they used a more disciplined well equipped army with modern weaponry all these together resulted the defeat of the marathas they never recover from these losses now coming to the questions you have studied a number of treaties 
remember all these treaties starting from the treaty of suraj salbai examine the importance of the treaty of basain it was one of the most important treaty with regard to the failure of the marathas then examine the factors behind the failure of the marathas against the british evaluate the importance of the treaty of salbai these are the questions now you are able to answer quickly to all these questions thank you dear students for watching my class thank you Hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet. Perhaps the most popular literary genre after novel is the short story. Sharp, compact narratives whose charm lies not only in what is said but also in what remains unsaid. Today I'll be reading one of the shortest instances of a short story that I have ever encountered and indeed the very charm of this particular story that i'm going to read out today lies in the way it abruptly ends it is an ancient tale from mesopotamia which has been retold by several authors among whom the name of somerset mom stands out uh, the adaptation that i'll be reading out is perhaps the closest to the one that mom wrote the story is titled in all of its adaptations almost as appointment in samara here is the story a merchant in baghdad once sent one of his servants to the market the servant was supposed to buy provisions for the merchant but when he returned he came back empty handed Indeed, the servant had all gone wild, and trembling with fear, he told his master that he had met death in the marketplace. When I entered the market, the servant said to his master, "I was jostled by a woman, and when I turned to look at her, I saw that she was death." I am very scared master because death looked at me with a threatening gesture can you please lend me your horse so that i can fly away from baghdad to the town of samara and thereby escape death the master being a good man gave his servant his best horse and saw him gallop off to samara to escape death then the master himself went to the marketplace and confronted death why did you make a threatening gesture to my servant asked the master to death and death replied it was not a threatening gesture rather it was a start of surprise i was astonished to see your servant here today because this evening I have an appointment with him in Samara. See you in the next episode of Literary Snippet.